I remember one summer when I was still at school. Oh, it was such a gloriously hot summer. Unfortunately, when I was taking my English classes, I sat right by a window where the sun shone directly on me. That didn't help. Admittedly, the texts that we were studying really did nothing for me. So that as, as uh, start again. So as soon as the sun had me in its embrace, my eyes would start to close, and I must have slept through some of those lessons. I'm not quite sure how I managed to get away with drifting, drifting away to the land of Nod, because sitting two desks in front of me was my teacher. Now, that's a bit of a fun example of what happens when you lose your concentration. And whilst it's something to chuckle about, poor concentration can seriously damage your productivity. Conversely, the better you can concentrate, the more you will achieve. In this age of technological marvels, we are beset with distractions. We have TVs, streaming channels, DVDs, computers, game machines and mobiles, social media, texting and... Eesh. There's so much that commands our attention that it's a wonder that we get anything done. Let's take a moment to have a look at the benefits of your enhanced concentration. One, as I've already said, the more that you can concentrate, the more productive you will be. It's simple. If you are devoting all of your attention to the task at hand, then you'll not only achieve more, but you'll do a more quality job. If you're checking your emails, texting or prattling about on social media, then your mind is not on the job. If your mind is not on what you're doing, then not only do you achieve less, but the, if this is a regular problem, then you'll train your mind to underperform. Two, have you ever stopped to consider just how difficult it can be to actively listen to someone, especially if you've no interest in what they're saying? Now, if you can train to actively listen, you'll significantly enhance your powers of concentration. And by showing that you can actively listen and take an interest in what's being said, you're going to gain insight and knowledge that you'll otherwise have been completely ignorant of. And one important thing is this body language. If you're bored of something and you're not paying attention, your body language is going to show it and people will show how much you're interested in what you have to say, what they have to say. So work at your concentration, my friend. Three, forget all the confusion that comes with multitasking. Just prioritise your tasks and work through the list. Think about it. What benefits does diverting your attention in a myriad of directions bring you? Equal weight is given to unimportant and important tasks. You do not devote enough time to deal with each task in a timely manner. Your work becomes sloppy, your productivity drops and your stress levels rise. By focusing your attention on completing tasks, rather than showing on just how busy you can be, you'll get the job done. Who'd have thunk it? When you take on one task at a time, you can concentrate on it, rather than worry about all the other tasks that you should be wasting your time on. As an added bonus, if you're working through your tasks list in a calm and ordered manner, then you'll feel relaxed rather than stressed confident rather than harassed. I tell you, what a radical concept. Can you imagine? Imagine getting your work done and not feeling stressed. I know who'd have thought it. Regardless of who you are, if your mind has got used to 
not ideal levels of concentration, then you've got some work to do. Please remember that you cannot just flick a switch and your mind will instantly become more user-friendly. You're going to have to reprogram it and that will only come through repetition. The following steps should help you to grow your powers of concentration. 1. Don't split your attention. Just focus on one thing at a time. I realise that, that thing you're focusing on could be something that you loathe or that bores you to tears. Whilst I didn't mind cold calling in person, I used to hate having to do it in, uh, on the phone. If you're not enjoying something, then the temptation to divert your attention can be overwhelming, which, let's face it, is something that I think we've all experienced at some point. Allowing yourself to get distracted means that you will waste your precious time and it's going to be difficult to get started again. Try to ensure that you are unable to see what the time is as the, la as the last thing that you need is to watch time drag by second by agonizingly slow second. Keep fixed in your mind the reason why you're doing your tasks and that the sooner you're finished, the sooner you can stop. If possible, try to find some way of challenging yourself so that at least you have something to motivate you. This too. This can be easier said than done, but you will improve with practice. We all get stray thoughts that pop into our minds. For example, what you did over the weekend or what you plan to do on the weekend. Once a thought like that intrudes on what you're doing, it's very tempting to allow your mind to pursue it. In the future, when one of those thoughts pays you a visit, don't allow yourself the luxury of following it and keep focused on what you're doing. It's not easy, but if you can work at excluding those thoughts, then you'll train your mind to focus. Three. This might not be for everyone, but you can try meditation, which will allow you to focus on what you're doing and where you're going. Now, so far, meditation has not been quite my thing, but I can appreciate what it can do for you. In livelier days, I used to be a hockey goalkeeper, and I remember one game in which we were playing against Marlborough. I was having a a very quiet game, so as was my want, I took a stroll away from my goal to see if I could motivate the opposition to give me something to do. We were playing on a nice soft grass pitch, and all around us was grass and woodland. My mind started to drift, and I don't know where it ended up, but it certainly wasn't on the hockey pitch. It was a strange situation. There was only me and I was alone on a field. The sky was blue, the sun was shining, and I had never felt so relaxed and at, and at peace. Fortunately or unfortunately, Marlborough finally took a look at where I was standing and thought, right, we're going to score a goal. So I came back to the real world just as Marlborough were finally staging an attack. Now, meditation might not be your thing, but it could be worth a go. You, might, you never know what might happen. Four, whilst you probably won't be able to deal with them all, do what you can to minimise all your external distractions. If you have a mobile phone with you, then be brave and turn it off. Only check your email a couple of times a day. If you're at work, then let your, your colleagues know that disturbing you would really not be a good idea. If you have phone calls to make, then try to deal with them at once. Try to have nothing around you that could distract your attention. If you can minimise your distractions, then 
you'll be able to concentrate more on what you're doing. Five, take notes. If all you're doing is listening to someone speak, then your concentration can and probably will drift. Don't forget that if your mind is visiting somewhere else, then your body language will let all present know that you're somewhere else. If your mind is away, then you could miss vital information that's important to your exam success or getting a job or getting a job done. If you take notes, then you'll be able to focus on what's being said. When you're in a small group or you're talking one-on-one, there's no place for you to hide. You need to be alert and at least given the impression that you're interested. If you're talking to someone and you're struggling to focus, then ask questions. Get them to clarify what they've said. If you can, show that you're taking uh, an apparent interest. Then even if the subject is for you a cure for insomnia, you show that you care about what the speaker is saying. People like to be heard and they respond positively to anyone who listens. Six, if you're struggling with something, then take a break from it. Sometimes you can just get a mental block when you're unable to focus on what you're doing and are are unable to see the way forward. Sorry about that. When you experience those kind of problems, don't waste your time by valiantly struggling on, because the more that you try to pursue the task, the more difficult it will get, and the more difficult it will be to complete the evil, horrible, miserable thing. The best thing to do is to just take a break and go and do something else instead. Once you return to what you are doing, you'll feel much more refreshed and able to carry on. Factoring breaks into your daily routine. Sorry, I'm having one of those days today. Factoring breaks into your daily routine is crucial, as it will give you the opportunity to recharge your batteries. You might think that you can keep working on and on and on, but your mind doesn't. And when you don't take breaks, your mind will start to tire. The more tired that it gets, the less clearly you'll be able to focus. And no surprise, it's going to affect your productivity. It doesn't matter what you do. You could talk with some colleagues, go get a drink, go for a walk or whatever. The important thing is that doing so will recharge your batteries and leave you uh, much more able to move forward with a clearer mind. Seven, use your time intelligently and don't try to cram too much into your day. Please remember that you are, or at least I presume you are, only human. And as such, there is a limit to what you can do in one day. Prioritise all your tasks and keep the focus on the important ones the ones that bring you results. If you try to do too much, then it's impossible to give everything the attention that it needs. As far as is possible, try to schedule your time so that at any point you know what needs doing. You need a long-term schedule so that you can plan into the future, but then you need to break that down, that schedule, so that you know what you need to do every month, week and day, and make it a living document. If you know what you need to do and achieve every day, then all you have to do is do it. Easier said than done, I'll I'll, I'll give you that one. Eight, one thing no one ever thinks about is their health, probably because it's always there. It can be easier said than done, but try to stay healthy. Given that your physical health will affect how your mind works, Try to stay at least reasonably fit. You know what needs doing. Try to eat healthily and get some exercise and get a good night's sleep. You don't have to be perfect, but you have to realise that your physical condition can impact upon your ability to concentrate and make the most of your abilities. Don't forget that if you have problems in concentrating, 
then you won't change them overnight. You have to change the way that your mind thinks, build the relationship with your mind, and that will take time. Okay, my friends, until the next time, keep living.